Assalamu alaikum everyone, I am Muhammad Talha and you are watching Talha Space Academy. Today I am going to explain a very important topic in the electronics and that is the characteristics of common base configuration. But before that, uh, I have already done a video on uh, common base configuration. So if you want to look at that, then uh, the link is in the description. So without wasting any time, let's start our video. So uh, as the name suggests that this is the common base configuration it means the base is common between the input and the output and uh, let's see this uh, configuration in this configuration the input is applied between the emitter and base and output is taken from the collector and the base junction so uh, what uh, I have said that uh, base is common to both input and output as shown in this figure so uh, you can see in both the figures of uh, NPN type and PNP type here you can see the base is common between input and output and if you see in the PNP type transistor then you can see that base is common between input and output so uh, let's see the circuit in a common base configuration the input current is the emitter current always remember this and the output current is the collector current okay input current is the emitter current and the output current is the collector current uh, and the ratio of change in collector current to the change in emitter current at constant collector base voltage is called current amplification factor that is see here the change in the emitter current divided by the change in the collector current and uh, uh, this is taken at the constant voltage between base and collector and it is uh, shown by alpha and known as the current amplification factor so this is the circuit uh, which is designed to study the common base configuration uh, as you see in this circuit uh, this is an ammeter which is connected with the emitter so it will measure the current emitter current that is IE this is also connected in series with the collector and uh, it will measure the current uh, the collector current which is known as IC and two voltmeters are also connected parallel to the emitter base junction and collector base junction this will measure the voltage between uh, base and emitter junction and this will measure the voltage between the collector and base junction two uh, resistances are applied R1 and R2 these are the variable resistors uh, by these resistances we can vary the voltages the input voltage that is VBE and the output voltage which is VCC so let's study the input characteristic it is a curve which shows the relationship between the emitter current and emitter base voltage V at constant collector base voltage the collector base voltage is kept constant and the relation is uh, established between the emitter current and the emitter base voltage and how to determine this this method of determining the characteristic is as follows first by means of R1 a suitable voltage is applied to VBC or VCB from VCC as uh, you have seen in the uh, circuit we will vary VCC so it will be applied to VBC or VCB and the voltage is VBE is increased in number of steps and corresponding values of IE are noted this is the input characteristics of uh, NPN transistor and uh, this is taken for two different types of transistor one is made up of germanium and the other one is uh, made up of silicon so you can see the pattern there is no difference the except uh, the starting point the starting point for gel germanium is uh, from 0.2 volt and for silicon it will be 0.4 volt uh, and you, uh, this is clear from the figure that uh, on x-axis the base emitter voltage is plotted and on the y-axis the emitter current is plotted there are many other points that uh, can be derived from the input characteristics and we will discuss them one by one number one this characteristic may be used to find the input resistance of a transistor the input resistance which is shown by RI value is given by the reciprocal of the slope of the input characteristic curve as uh, you can see in this figure this is the point 
where uh, we can find the input resistance first we have to find the slope and then the input resistance is the reciprocal of that slope point number two the emitter current that is ie increases rapidly with a small increase emitter base voltage as you can see this there is not enough uh, increment in the base emitter voltage but the current increases very rapidly for germanium and for as well as the silicon it means that the input resistance is very high let's see point number three the emitter current is dependent of collector voltage uh, this is very clear from this uh, graph that the emitter current that is ie dependent on the collector voltage and it will vary now come towards the output characteristic what are output characteristics it is a curve which shows the relationship between the collector current that is IC and the collector base voltage VCB at constant emitter current that is shown by IE so uh, we will uh, keep the input constant and vary the output and study the output characteristics and how to do this first by means of R2 which was connected to the output a suitable voltage is applied to the base and the emitter next VCB is increased from zero in a number of steps and corresponding values of IC are noted. The above whole procedure is repeated for different values of emitter current for obtaining the family of curves. This is the output characteristics as you can see. Uh, the emitter current firstly is kept zero, then 2 milliampere, then 4 milliampere, then 6 milliampere and then 8 milliampere. And the graph is plotted between the voltage between collector base junction and on the y-axis uh, collector current is plotted okay and these are regions uh, which I will explain later the point number one which uh, can be derived from these graphs from the output characteristics are point number one the collector current IC varies with the VCB only at very low voltages as uh, it is clear here that it will vary the collector current varies with respect to VCB but at very low voltage and when the voltage is high it will not vary point number two this characteristic may be used to find the output resistance uh, for input resistance we were measuring RI and now we can measure RO how we can find change in the collector base voltage divided by the change in collector current okay the change in this voltage divided by the change in this voltage from two curves or two points at constant IB we can find the output resistance point number three a very large change in the collector base voltage produces a small change in collector current it means that the output resistance is very high as you can see there is a little bit increment in the collector current while the voltage varies from zero to 12 something but there is not enough increment in the collector current point number four the collector current is constant above a certain values of collector base voltage above a certain value this value it means that IC is independent of VCB and depends upon IE only from this point you can see that uh, the collector current is constant from above the value like uh, above uh, 12 volt or something let's uh, see the uh, different definitions of the regions we which you can find in the output characteristics the first region that is circled here is the active region in this region the collector junction is reverse biased and the emitter junction is forward biased in this region when emitter current is zero and the collector current is equal to ICO this reverse saturation current remains constant as uh, you can see it is almost constant and is independent of the corrector voltage V as long as it is below the breakdown potential this the second region that is the saturation region here the region to the left of the ordinate VCB is equal to zero this is called the saturation region in this region both junctions are forward biased this is also called as the bottom region because the voltage has fallen near the bottom of the characteristic where VCB is equal to zero 
In this region, IC increases rapidly with even a small increase VCB. And the last, that is the cutoff region, here, the region below when the emitter current is equal to zero. Below, this is the zero emitter current and the region below this point, this, this point is known as cutoff region for which the emitter and collector junctions are both reverse biased is called cutoff region. This portion of characteristic is not coincident with the voltage axis which is very clear from this figure. So that's it. Uh, this is the common base configuration uh, which you will study in electronics. If uh, you have uh, further queries then uh, you can uh, use the comment section or you can just email me. I will try to reply all them. Okay. That's all. Allah Hafiz.